Hey guys, it's EG, and it's time for us to take a look at the fourth and final episode of Distro Delves, where we're going to be taking a look at Solus 4.0. Let's check it out. Now, Solus is yet another Linux distro that is designed specifically as a desktop distro. However, unlike many of its contemporaries, Solus is not based on another distro. It is very much its own thing. The flavor of Solus I'm using here is Solus with the budgie desktop, which is considered to be the flagship version of Solus. From what I can gather, Solus uses its own installer called OS Installer. It's a pretty traditional installer, which asks for the user information during the install process and not after. Once the installer's done, you reboot, log in, and that's it. No welcome screen here, just a prompt to connect to my Wi-Fi network. I didn't get a notification to update the system until I opened the Solus Software Center, of which there was just under a gigabyte of updates. A kinda cool feature of the Software Center is that updates are broken out into categories and you can select which categories you want, the required updates being mandatory. After updating the system, we'll go ahead and install our NVIDIA drivers. We could install the NVIDIA drivers piecemeal from the Software Center, but the proper way of installing them is through the Solus Driver Manager. Now the driver manager doesn't give you an option to pick versions, but it does ask you if you want to install the 32-bit libs, which is useful for gaming. Now unfortunately I had some difficulties getting the damn driver installed. The driver manager would seemingly hang while trying to download the NVIDIA GLX driver common package. I ended up rebooting and rerunning the driver two different times before they finally finished installing. Not sure what that was about. So like I said at the beginning, I like to look at Budgie as a highly customized version, not a fork, of GNOME. Now I know that Budgie is its own thing, its own desktop manager and everything, but it has a few like feature apps, for lack of a better term, but pretty much everything else is reused GNOME components and GTK apps. Raven is one such feature that is specific to the Budgie desktop. It's basically a side panel or a drawer that duplicates or replaces some of the traditional functionality that you'd find in a taskbar. This metaphor, the side panel that pops out, is in Windows, if you're familiar with Windows 10 and how that works. And also Deepin has virtually the exact same thing, but with way more functionality built in. Raven is actually pretty simple. It handles notifications, just like the Windows one does, and it also has a calendar and some audio stuff. Raven itself can be extended by running applications such as media players. Budgie, being a desktop environment, has its own panel, which is remarkably similar to what you would find on Cinnamon or XFCE. In fact, I find it to be almost identical to Cinnamon's panel, but with more concise styling and a few extra features, like dynamic transparency and a built-in dock mode. And besides Raven in the Budgie panel, you'll find the expected slew of GTK apps and specifically applications carried over from GNOME. If you've seen the Fedora 31 episode of Distro Delves, all of these apps will look familiar if they just have different styling. Budgie even reuses GNOME settings like Wholesale, and from what I can tell, this looks like the same version used in Fedora 31, which is GNOME 3.34. And of course, Solus has its very own package manager called EOPKG, which is a fork of another package manager used on a Turkish Linux distribution called Pardis. Being the trailblazer it is, Solus ships with its very own application manager called Software Center. Unlike App Center and GNOME Software, Solus' Software Center isn't trying to be like a store or anything. You can find any package available on the system here. Applications, development libraries, icons, anything available for the system can be had here. Software Center also has a cool third-party section, which seems to be a sort of curated version of the AUR. Unfortunately, there's relatively few applications in here, and I'm unsure when or even how these scripts or whatever they are are maintained. And speaking of third-party app support, if the app you want isn't available in the Software Center, you'll need to get it from one of the many other package managers and formats out there. Flatpak is not installed by default. Snap, however, is installed by default and set up ready to rock and roll right out of the box. Though at this point in time, Software Center doesn't search the Snap Store, so if you want to install an application from the Snap Store, you'll be using the CLI. And as far as app images go, after toggling the executable flag, they work right out of the box. And now let's talk about volumes and network discovery. Internal and external volumes mounted flawlessly. No passwords, no fuss, no bullshit. Just like it should be. Network discovery was looking pretty good at first. I mean, there's my workstation and a pair of local network shares. I could connect to my own workstation without troubles. I could connect to my Windows laptop after a brief hiccup with the connection, but I got through. 
However, I was unable to connect to my Solus machine. Not only was there no way to set up Samba, which seems to be a reoccurring issue with a lot of distros, but those media shares didn't work, like at all. I couldn't connect to them from my Windows machine and I couldn't connect to them from my Linux workstation. Now printer management was pretty good. Solus discovered my printer, but it asked me for my password to update things like the location and whether it's the default printer and some other things. For a desktop distribution, that's just silly. And now on to my favorite part, resource usage and metrics. Interestingly, Solus doesn't ship with HTOP, so I had to install it manually. At idle, Solus used a staggering 567 megabytes, we'll just call it 570 megabytes, most of that coming from the Budgie window manager and a, quite a lot of ancillary GNOME services. And there were only 67 tasks running. This makes Solus the lightest weight distro we've tested on distro delves. Very impressive. The Geekbench benchmarks were equally impressive, blowing our Ubuntu LTS baseline away by a surprising amount. Solus is sort of known for having some clear Linux kernel optimizations, and you can really tell from the startup and shutdown times, but I don't know enough about these optimizations to say whether they impacted the benchmarks, but considering these numbers, it looks pretty impressive. So how does Solus hold up to the gaming performance benchmarks? Oh, things are not looking good. I couldn't get GTA 5 to launch until I disabled the custom Steam Linux runtime. And wow, the frame rate is bad, staggeringly bad in fact. It clocked in just over 13 frames a second. I actually thought something was wrong with my system here, like maybe it was overheating or something. I took the side panel off, tweaked the Nvidia settings, disabled desktop effects, nothing helped. GTA 5 ran horribly. Tomb Raider got an equally bad score at 24.2 frames a second. Once again, I tried playing with the Nvidia driver settings, no luck. 24.2 was the best I got after running the benchmark several times. Same story with CSGO. The choppy frame rate makes the game extremely difficult to play, but I think that you can see from the footage, the frame rate isn't just low, it's also inconsistent. And with no surprise, Uni Engine Valley also clocked a terrible frame rate at just over 10.3, even lower than Fedora's score. So with Solus's low resource usage and great benchmark scores, why on earth did it do so badly in gaming? To be honest, I have no idea, I really don't. The Nvidia driver version used was 440, which is the same version that I'm using on my workstation, the same rig I stream to Mixer and everything else, so it's probably not that. Solus ships with several enhancements to Steam, but they're mostly just tweaks and fixes for games that have trouble running, so I don't think it has anything to do with that. Honestly, if I had to point fingers, I would point my index fingers straight at the GNOME stack. We saw bad frame rates with Fedora 31 too, not to mention that terribly embarrassing bug where launching CSGO would lock the whole desktop up. That was a GNOME issue. And given that Budgie uses a lot of underlying software from GNOME, I think it's fair to question whether the GNOME stuff was causing those huge regressions. But outside of the gaming benchmarks and the weird file sharing issues, I think Solus is actually pretty okay, especially considering it is its own, like, isolated thing. The styling of the Budgie desktop is a bit off, to be honest. I don't like the dark theme. It's not really dark, it's actually, like, black. But besides that, the desktop is fine, Raven is cool, Solus itself is really fast, and I'm inclined to think that the gaming performance is, you know, a temporary thing. Obviously nobody wants bad performance and they'll figure out what the problem is and fix it. But at this point in time, the gaming performance, on my machine anyways, is really bad. So that's going to wrap this episode up, and like I said, this is the last episode of Distro Delves for this season. We're going to be starting another one sometime in January, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to support me and the channel, you can find me over on Twitter. I've also got a Patreon with some cool stuff happening over there. You can find links to all of this stuff in the description. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.